physics, physiology, anatomy, psychology, mathematics. In each of these sciences, this greatest scientist of the 19th century made brilliant discoveries that brought him worldwide fame. Hermann Helmholtz is a striking example of how important the vastness of a scientist's views, the richness and variety of his knowledge and interest are. Hermann Ludwig Ferdinand Helmholtz was born in Potsdam in 1821 as the son of a senior grammar school teacher. Going by his father's wish, Hermann entered the Friedrich Wilhelm Institute of Medicine and Surgery. He studied physiology and wrote doctoral thesis dealing with the structure of the nervous system where he proved the existence of neurons for the first time. Helmholtz served as a military doctor for the next three years. While living in barracks, getting up at five o'clock in the morning after the trumpet call, the surgeon of the Hussar Regiment found time for his scientific studies. After finishing military service, he went to Berlin to prepare for the final examinations for the rank of a doctor. While preparing for the exams, Helmholtz regularly attended Gustav Magnus's home physical laboratory that was a nursery of physics experimentalists, as one of the contemporaries said. Afterwards, Helmholtz became Magnus's successor, moved the laboratory to the building of the Berlin University, and made it a world scientific center. In Berlin, Johann Müller was another teacher of Helmholtz. In 1845, Helmholtz published in his journal an article about the consumption of matter during the work of muscles. In the same year, the young scientists who grouped around Magnus and Müller founded the Berlin Physical Society that subsequently became the German Physical Society. In the first volume of its abstract journal, Helmholtz published the review on the theory of physiological thermal phenomena. And on the 23rd of July, 1847, at one of the sessions, Helmholtz gave the report on the conservation of energy. There he formulated his principle of the conservation of energy while studying muscle metabolism. Helmholtz focused mainly on physics and spoke about biological phenomena very curiously and concisely. Nevertheless, it was this work that opened Helmholtz the way to physiology and general pathology department of the medical department in the Konigsberg University. The scientist got the post of an associate professor and kept it for six years till he moved to Bonn as a professor of anatomy and physiology. In 1858, Helmholtz became a professor of physiology in Heidelberg. For a long time, he successfully studied the physiology of vision. His works considerably enriched this field of knowledge and applied medicine. The result of the research was Helmholtz's famous Handbook of Physiological Optics. The scientist constructed a thalmoscope, a special device that allowed measuring the corneal curvature of the back and front crystalline lens surface and studying the beam refraction in the eye. Studies of the eye showed that the retina has three types of sensitive fibers that are irritated most of all by red, blue, and green beams respectively. A series of irritations create all that variety of colors we see around us. In Heidelberg, Helmholtz carried out his classical experiments determining the speed of nerve impulses. It turned out to be rather slow, less than 100 meters per second. Before Helmholtz's experiments, they said that it had been impossible to measure this speed. Helmholtz's contribution to physiological acoustics was not less. In 1863, his book On the Sensation of Tone as a Physiological Basis for the Theory of Music was issued. On the basis of his resonance theory, Helmholtz created the doctrine of acoustic sensations, voice, and musical instruments. While conducting studies on vibrations, Helmholtz researched some problems that were of great importance for the theory of music and analyzed the causes of harmony in music. His classical works on hydrodynamics and the basics of geometry also appeared in Heidelberg. 
In 1871, Helmholtz became a professor of the Berlin University. After moving to Berlin, he totally devoted himself to physics, studying its most difficult problems. Under his guidance, the Physical Institute was established. Physicists from the whole world came to work there. Kaiser Wilhelm ennobled Helmholtz. The scientist was appointed director of a newly founded center of German metrology, the Physical and Technical Institute in Charlottenburg. In 1889, Helmholtz suffered a great loss. His son Robert, a very promising young physicist, met with an untimely death without finishing his work on the radiation of burning gases. His pupils became Helmholtz's sole consolation. Thousands of students attended his lectures. The best scientists considered him their teacher, and Heinrich Hertz and Max Planck were among them. Helmholtz's last works, written two years before his death, dealt with engineering mechanics. Hermann Helmholtz died on the 8th of September, 1894.